morning, everyone. Welcome to the inauguration of our new show called Through Their Eyes. I am so excited about tonight's show. Uh, this has been a, a project that I have been working on for a long time. So my name is Marilyn Shannon. I am helping to produce this show. We have been looking to do this for a long time, have a podcast for teens, young, adult, young adults, uh, college students, high school students, middle school students, and parents, if you want to, for sure, and anyone who loves our kids. Because the, the, the idea is the more that they can talk about things, whatever those things are, the healthier they're going to be. You know that and I know that. So we've been on a hunt and we found two fabulous young men who are going to take over this show. But before they do, I just want to welcome each and every one of you to connect with us anytime you like. You can call us in our studio and that number is 919-518-9773. And you can also come in on Skype, and that will be voice, and that is computers, then the number 2K voice, and we would love to get you to, you know, call in, comment, uh, ask the question of, 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 our, of our hosts, whatever you like. And then also, we have a chat. You can put your name under the video. It could be a nickname as well. And you can also communicate with us there. We are watching that chat and look forward to hearing from you. This is a show for everyone. This is a show to get up all those conversations, a safe space. I am not controlling it. In fact, the only thing I am controlling is that we don't control it. All right. So with that, let me turn over the show to Nick and to Josh. So Nick, you want to say hi? Yes, Marilyn, I would love to. Thank you very much for the introduction um, to everybody out there. Hi. Um, like Marilyn said, my name is Nick. Um, I'm currently a senior at North Carolina State University in Raleigh. Um, I am studying sport management and psychology, um, not, not the average duo, I know, um, but I have, a, I have a tremendous interest in the kind of sports and performance psychology field. Um, my goal is to one day go into graduate school and um, eventually try to become a, a practicing sports psychologist and kind of help people um, perform to the best they can. But for now, um, again, like Marilyn said, I'm absolutely thrilled to um, have this opportunity alongside Josh and to get to talk to all you guys. Um, kind of, kind of uh, shed some light on how um, people like me and him see the world and uh, talk talk about everything there is to talk about. So, uh, how are you doing, Josh? Yeah, thanks, Nick. So, hi everyone. My name is Joshua. Um, currently, I'm only a freshman in high school, but in terms of what I'm trying to kind of do with my life right now, I'd say I'm still definitely in a really exploratory age, and that's part of the reason why I really want to do things like this because especially I think for most teenagers and people growing up, going through like their adolescence, they're making an understanding of the world. And I'm hoping that by participating in things like this, regardless of where I'm kind of choosing my own path, I'm going to be able to gain some more awareness and kind of figure out different people's lives and all. So I would say definitely that's where I'm at currently. Uh, other than that, I still have some like normal kid hobbies. I enjoy like biking, playing basketball with my friends, but uh, for the most part, that's all I can say about me. So, Nick, do you have any ideas of what we're going to start talking about today? Yeah, man. Um, I, I, I think you made a really good point early on, like how how this point in our lives, it's it's such a great time to kind of explore, like really everything there is to explore. Um, like I said, I'm going to uh, college at NC State in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I spent the first probably, I guess, uh, 18 years of my life living just outside of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Um, I had never step, stepped foot in North Carolina um, when I was kind of uh, when I was like junior, senior in high school, um, looking at applying to schools, you know, um, figuring out where I want to go, what I want to do. Like you said, um, almost everybody from my high school ended up going to, you know, Temple, Penn State, um, Pittsburgh, places like that. Um, and I, I wanted to go do something totally different. Um, so uh, I, I was looking at schools that kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and, and NC State really kind of checked all the boxes. So I figured why not come down, take a visit. Um, and, you know, what do you know? I, I absolutely loved it. Um, and what, what, what feels like a few short years later, here I am um, looking at graduating uh, this, this May. But I mean, um, like uh, back to exploring different things. Um, I, I've, I've changed paths about what, what feels like 50 different times during my time here. Um, I, I, I started out looking at different minors, 
Um, I was studying sociology, studying anthropology, studying business. Um, I, I eventually found my way to psychology. Um, and really, um, I, I think all that exploring, all that trying out new stuff and honestly failing with that stuff, figuring out, hey, maybe this isn't what I want to do, helps um, make me realize kind of that, 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 that this, is, uh, this is what I want to do. Um, and um, I think we're at the perfect time in our lives to do that. Um, like yeah, you were definitely. Saying. And uh, Nick, if you don't mind me asking, because we've been talking a bit before we started doing the show. Since you're now doing a major that focuses on psychology, do you have any ways you think you can relate that back to why you wanted to do something like this? Um, I think to me, um, why people do things has, has always been interesting. Um, like uh, studying people's behavior, um, studying people's thought processes, um, emotions, um, perception, all of that. Um, in terms of the, the sport management degree, um, I've, I've, I've always been, um, like I've I've always been a sports guy. Like I said, growing up just outside of Philadelphia, um, it's 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 kind of in our DNA that way. Like the Eagles, Phillies, Sixers, Flyers. Um, my parents met at Villanova Law School, so rooting for Villanova basketball as well. Um, and then kind of um, wanting to combine that with my interest in people, why people do things, why they want to do things, and uh, being able to help them through any any battles they're facing. Um, that's where I, 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 I kind of found the, the psychology. Um, I've really enjoyed all the psychology classes I've taken because it's, it's such a broad field, but such an important field too. Um, and I want to kind of combine all of that in my own fun way. You know? Do you think that um, maybe there's anything that you've already learned that you think could like apply to our audience of like teens and young adults as to why certain kids do things? Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I, you, you know, it's funny. I, I, I picked this up in a class I'm currently taking, actually. Um, everybody's actions and everybody's behavior um, makes sense to them while they're doing it. So um, even if, if, if you think somebody's acting like completely crazy, you see somebody on the, on the side of the road doing something wild or even um, like you're, you're in an argument with somebody um, butting heads on whatever it is, whatever that person is doing, their actions make sense to them. Um, and, um, I, I, I think that's a great mindset to keep if you end up frustrated with somebody, if you just can't figure out what's going on with somebody, um, a great first step to understanding is realizing, Hey, they're, they're doing this because they think it's right for them. It makes sense to them. Um, yeah, that was one of my biggest takeaways. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. I think, um, I guess coming from my personal experiences, I've noticed, especially in kids, there's a big role that has to be played by how your parents raise you because ever since you were born assuming that you've had like that long-term guardian you've been conditioned to think about things from their perspective and so i think as that gets kind of like passed down generationally your perspective on what defines something as like normal to you is really really shaped by that because culturally everyone has their own traditions and when other people attempt to like ostracize those traditions that's also a factor of them being used to their own tradition. It's like, in a way, they're not that much at fault as much as they've just never been introduced to something different. So in terms of like finding progressiveness so that we can become more open to those kinds of traditions, do you think you have any ideas, any thoughts on like what we can do in order to build awareness of other cultures? Can I ask you a question before you answer, Nick? Yeah, That's of course. a really good question. And I'm curious, are, do you see issues with that? in school about kids accepting other, I mean, I'm sorry, kids, but how, what do you want me to call you anyway? I mean, what, no, um, like, if young, I mean, what do you, what do you, how do you like to be called? What do you like to be called besides Nick and Josh? I would say young adult, young man, I guess, but I mean, um, um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a person, you know, I don't, I don't need right. all that that detailed classification. Okay. Um, okay. I don't want to offend but it. No, I got you. <laughs> but I want to learn too. You know, I'm here to listen yeah. to, to you and I'm sitting here and I'm busting because it's so good. And I want to learn from you just like, and you said it to begin with, right? That we want to learn from each other. So I, my question is, and, I'm, and I love where this is going. My question is, do you see in school your, your tribes your community 
Do you see them at odds with each other or culturally? What do you see? Because I know what I see in my, you know, my groups. What do you see? Um, in my experience, um, I actually think this has been one of the biggest strengths of NC State. Um, sure, there's there's absolutely a lot of di different demographics at the school, whether that's, um, you know, genders and gender identities, whether that's races, whether that's um, uh, di different religions, all of that stuff. And, you know, there, there's always going to be some, I want to say, ignorant people that are going to be judging and making fun of other people. But I mean, in, in my experience at NC State, the vast majority has been um, extremely accepting, extremely loving, um, and very, very open to who, who people are and, you know, what, what people are. Um, I give a ton of credit to the school and like the, the administration, um, for kind of setting that in motion. Um, and then a lot of credit to the student body as well for kind of following through with that. Um, I know Josh, you're at a, at a um, different kind of point in your life. How have you seen that? Yeah, so I'm actually really excited you called upon it because to be honest, this is definitely something that I'm pers that like personally matters a lot to me. I would say that actually I do think that there are some like definite groups that get ended up getting formed, at least for me going into even through middle school into high school. I think for kids, it can definitely be hard for them to break a superficial barrier. Um, I think that in my own thinking about it, there's a certain point at which you kind of break past like superficial perspectives on things and start to realize that no matter who the person is, their life is really not that different to yours in the sense that you're not just defined by one thing. I think that um, stereotyping is a big thing because it's a label that defines people by one thing about them. When in a 24 hour day, like a fully flowing life, you just can't be put under that one label. And I think I noticed that, especially in a high school environment, stereotyping is a big thing, right? Whether it's a joke, whether it's not, some people will call you like the athletic kids, the nerdy kids at all. But um, there's always so many exceptions to the rule. And my theory, just my philosophy on it is that once you really get to know a person, if you've gotten to know them to the point where you know everything about them, you, they just will not fit under any stereotype. It, it's impossible because as much as you can associate people with what they do, uh, whether it's like playing sports, maybe you do drama, theater, as much as you can associate people by that, there's so many other factors as to why they do it, what they get out of it. I mean, there could be a kid out there who's super introverted. They really struggle with people. And that's the exact reason why they decide to do something like drama, like theater, because it lets them get out there. And on the contrary, you could have the most extroverted person in the world. They could be super sociable. And they're still doing drama and theater because it suits their personality. So then how are you going to say that a drama and theater kid is completely introverted most of the time, or they're always super extroverted? It's really hard to tell because at the end of the day, the motivations for why people do things extend much deeper. And I think likewise, if I'm just going to go on a little longer, um, when you see people that are troublesome, it's so hard to tell whether it's out of malicious intent whether it's out of the way they've been raised or if it's because they just have a tough upbringing. And it's a lot easier to not blame somebody for being like troublesome, which I know is a vague term, but it's a lot easier to not blame someone for being like a troublesome person if they've had a really hard upbringing or they really need some help than if they're just doing it out of malicious intent, they already kind of have what they need in life. And I think that that distinction is a big thing that I've realized it's that when it comes to groups and understanding people, the first step you need to take is just realizing it always is going to be much deeper than just X amount of hobbies equals Y amount of character traits. Yeah, no, um, I, I think that's a great point you bring up. I absolutely agree. Um, I think in my experience, when people will, will stereotype a group or kind of make an assumption about a large group of people, um, it's usually because they don't actually know very much about that group. Um, uh, you, you, you might know one or two things, know one or two people in there, but far from the entire group. And that's how you can end up kind of um, identifying everybody into one. It's because of that ignorance, not actually having much knowledge at all. Um, I mean, like I, it's not nearly as severe as what some other people can go through. But I mean, um, being labeled as a, a, a northerner in a more southern school. Um, oh, so so you're um, um, impatient. 
uh, used to the cold, you know, uh, even, even like very vague, very basic stuff like that. You don't know any better. Um, and I don't, it's, it's hard to blame people for not knowing any better, but I think that's, that's by far the easiest way to break those stereotypes is literally just get to know people as people. They're not, Oh, this is a, this is a jock, like you said, or this is a guy on the chess club. No, get to know him as John or get to know him as, as Josh or Nick, you know? Um, and then, and then all that, all those superficial stereotypes and everything can come crumbling right down. Yeah. And I actually really, really love the way you put that, especially framing it under like knowing people by their name, because I'll say everyone does have certain levels of like assumption to make about a person. And I think the reason why, as there's a trend, when you get older, you start to become more and more aware is because you've just gained experiences with more people. Um, I think one I can specifically refer to is I actually joined a group really recently to do drama and theater. And I remember going into it, going into auditions, I felt a little uncomfortable. Like these people, they're not really like me. Um, I can't get along with them. And there were some kids I thought, I just, I don't know them well enough. Like our, our personality groups would never be able to click. And just being a part of it now and getting to know the cast, I realized how much deeper the connection with them goes. And I think just because of that experience, I'm never going to stereotype a kid that's involved with things like that again, because just as simple as that is, I also have friends who would get labeled off with these kind of like, you know, uh, stereotypes, like super popular and all. And they do things like, I, I hate to bring up chess club because I'm not trying to like promote a stereotype, but they'll do something like chess club, which could be correlated by some kids as like nerdy, but they're still this way because at the end of the day, they should be known by their name and really who they are in character more than their hobbies really define them. Yeah, no, uh, I, I, I absolutely agree with that. Um, and I, I, I think that would be kind of kind of uh, universal across whatever um, hobby or interest it is. Um, that being said, I also think a great way of kind of breaking down barriers like we're talking about is just to find one, one similarity um, like b b between you and the person you're talking about, um, whether that is an activity you have in common, great. Whether it's it's one type of music or one artist you really like, whether it's um, having having one class you guys both loved or one class you both hate, you know. Um, once you go there, you can really kind of build build off of that. Um, and even if you don't really have anything else in common with the person, even if it's just one thing, you guys could really branch off of that and try to learn a lot about the other people, and then. Um, maybe you end up finding a ton more in common and maybe you don't. And I mean, either way, um, I, I, I think both outcomes are pretty cool. You know, um, you can learn a lot about somebody. Um, um, I, I, I definitely think that's one of the biggest advantages I got coming to school down here. Um, and I mean, kind of forcing myself to jump in and meet a, a ton of new people at once. Um, I've been a, a, a pretty introverted kid my whole life. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know a single person in the entire state of North Carolina when I came down to college. So um, I was, I was kind of forced um, to go meet people, make myself uncomfortable. Um, and I, I, I really am glad I did it because um, I absolutely agree. Uh, like you said like a few minutes ago, that um, in high school, it's very easy to get kind of thrown into a box. You know, uh, you got the athletes, you got your nerds, you got music, you got this, that, and the other thing. There's um, um, everybody kind of has their box that way. Um, you can get bullied because of that, or um, honestly, you could turn into a bully because of that, just trying to fit in with those around you. Um, in my experience, once you graduate high school and once you kind of get on to the next step, you know, whether that's college, whether that's taking a year off, whether that's getting straight into work, whatever it is for you, because I really believe that everybody has different paths and there's no wrong path that way. Um, but once you graduate high school and kind of get on, all of that stuff kind of vanishes and um, you, kind of, you kind of realize how superficial it is. Um, and um, I definitely think high school is a great time to develop. Um, it's a, it's a, a, a great experience, but once you kind of get out of there, um, especially for me, you, 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 you kind of realize how big the world is. Um, so um, Josh, I, I know you're not there yet. And yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Well, sure. actually, I have. I might have two questions. I actually have more than that. But um, I wanted to ask the two of you, since you both acknowledge that you are both introverts, what this is like to be on a show like this, and and maybe you know what did you do to prepare? Because 
you know, I would love to see, you know, more high school and college students and young adults come in here and talk and be guests and hosts and all that stuff. So what message can you share? And you mentioned about bullies, and I think that's a really important subject. You all, you, you know, when people don't feel good about themselves, like you, you spoke about Josh earlier, right? And, you know, we should be known more for who we are rather than a label. Well, you know, bullyism is an outcry from there. So do whatever you want with that or leave it alone. I'm curious what your philosophy is about bully stuff, but I really also am interested in how you handled this. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Josh, oh, Josh, you got it. You got it. Okay, okay. Well, um, I think one thing I'll say is so I didn't mean to like miscommunicate. I wouldn't say I'm an introvert necessarily in the sense that I've had some experience doing things like this before, but there was definitely a phase in my life where I felt socially I was much more scared and I was much more awkward. And I guess if I had to look back at that kid, especially even just like a year ago, the best advice I'd tell him about doing things like this, first of all, is that you need to find a reason for wanting to do things within yourself. Um, I think that, I guess the best way to word it is that I thought I was immune to being uh, like uh, motivated by external factors. I thought superficial concepts, things like I'm doing this to fit in and all, I thought, I guess in a way I almost thought I was above that in the past because I thought as long as I'm aware of it, as long as I know, hey, don't try to fit in all the time and you don't have to worry about what other people think. I thought just by knowing that, I'm going to be okay because I know it. But the hard thing that you'll realize is that at the end of the day, in a society where it's so focused on trying to fit in, which is really what there is a level of in adolescence, you are motivated by your external factors. Even the most extroverted person could become introverted based off just what other people think about them because you let what other people think about you be your fuel for what you do. Um, even an extrovert, they can get a little too excited just because of the fact that they're getting so such a high off of like approval of others the second that approval is gone you suddenly become so like you know closed in again so i would say my biggest piece of advice that i'd give anyone especially if they're in a quieter state of mind and they need to go out and do something like this is just do it for yourself and also i mean who's gonna stop you like at the end of the day even if you do something like this and you mess up and you do horrible a, there's always the opportunity to look at it as a growth experience. And if that worry is truly coming from like worries about what other people think of you, which I guess this now gets to the point where you're looking at like broader issues than just talking on a podcast, you might even be looking at socializing in general. A big thing you just have to remember is anything you do, you should do for yourself, which I know can sound a little cliche, but I think people actually forget that. I mean, even their goals in life could still be because of validation. Even if it's to grow up, to be really successful, you could still be doing that because you just want validation. And so I think the biggest thing is making sure you're doing it for yourself. I, I think that's a big one, especially to break out of your shell as an introvert. Make sure you're not talking to people because you want them to like you. You're talking to people because you enjoy talking. Yeah, no, Josh, I think that's a great point. Um, before I kind of get to that, I want to, I want to say one thing. Um, I, I definitely think I am an introvert. I'm not like ashamed of that or anything. Um, and I, I, I think everybody does kind of fall, fall into the one or two sides and that's just who you are. Like, um, being an introvert, um, if you're around a, a large group of people and in a social setting for a while, your kind of social battery is going to die out and, um, you can kind of recharge that by, uh, taking a little bit of downtime, a little bit of time for yourself. Um, and then, and then you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll be kind of ready to go talk to more people again. That's definitely how I am personally. Um, but there's also a lot of people, uh, you know, extroverts, um, if you're, you know, uh, bogged down in the library all day, or you got a, got a, a long day of study and long day of classes. And then, um, you, you go out, um, with a, a, a big group of friends or you go out to a party. Um, if, if that's kind of how you uh, recharge your battery, that's how you're an extrovert. Um, so. I definitely think there's a little bit of a stigma around those words. Um, like the shy person who will uh, never make eye contact with anybody, never go say, hey, first, oh, that's your introvert. And then your party animal is your extrovert. Um, never go into class, skipping class, go into parties, you know, doing all this stuff. Um, I think there's definitely a little bit of a stigma on those words. Um, 
But um, back to your point of doing it for yourself, Josh, I absolutely agree with that too. Um, as someone who's more introverted, kind of doing something like this, it's completely jumping into the deep end for me again. Um, I don't have much experience doing something like this. And frankly, it is, it is pretty scary. Um, but I'm, I know that I'm going to be better off doing it. Um, I think I'll, 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 I'll learn a lot about myself because I am doing it for myself. Like you said, um, there's a, 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 a motto I like to think about a lot. Um, like it's kind of talking about working out, but it can be applied kind of like this too. Um, like no, no, no matter how slow you're, you're, you're walking or you're running or no matter how light you're lifting, you're um, you're still lapping everybody on the, on the couch, um, at home. Um, and I, uh, you know, um, just kind of keep, keep making steps that way. Um, keep going. You're always lapping everybody on the couch. Um, I think it's a great kind of message for kind of whatever, whatever challenges you're facing, whether it's about being social like this, um, whether it's about getting into better shape, whether it's about, you know, studying, whatever it is you're dealing with, keep on going, keep on fighting and, 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 and do it for you. Because um, in my experience, you're, you're, sooner or later, you're going to burn out if you're doing it for somebody else. That's not, that's not what really matters, you know? Yeah. And I'm super glad you brought that up because I actually, I hope you don't mind if I rewind to what you were saying about like the stigma on being introverted and extroverted. Um, I actually do also completely agree. I think the term should at least in my eyes, fundamentally just be used to decide whether you get energy from socializing or if you lose energy from it. And I've actually even noticed it's so easy to label somebody off as like an introvert if, if they don't talk that much or don't make contact and an extrovert if they're good at like social interaction. Because I think the brain gets wired to notice the, a pattern of um, if you've had practice socializing, you're good at it and you would only be socializing if you're extroverted. And then the other way around, if you don't talk that much, you're not as good at talking, so you're introverted. But I think that you can easily be an introvert who seems super extroverted because you had to do it. You had to do it in order to, uh, for some reason, whether it was to meet your goals. And I think I definitely know extroverts who become introverted too, just out of insecurity. Like you actually like to talk to people, but you just became scared of it because of maybe bad experiences in the past. So... I would actually say that I completely agree. I don't even like using those terms necessarily. I think as long as you're just describing um, how someone like gets energy from interacting, that's all it can really be because past that, you never really know about someone. I mean, unless that own person thinks of themselves that way, I think it's too hard for anyone to really decide what their views are on being around other people. Right, um, and then pe people can kind of shape their whole identity around that and kind of what other people can see them as um and somebody who might really start out as liking other people like and hanging out um you could end up being kind of com completely kind of shelled off just because of what somebody else says and as as ridiculous as that sounds as ridiculous as that kind of should be i think that's exactly how it is for some people you know um i think uh, the channel uh, just another little thing so that if anybody wants to call in and speak with uh, Nick and Josh, please feel free to do that. Uh, you can call at 919-518-9773 if you have any comments, any questions about some of what we're talking about, or maybe you have something on your mind or in your heart, and you would love us to you know, explore that, please feel free. Because I mean, the sky is the limit. There is nothing that we will not encourage talking about. So please know that. You can also join us in our chat on our website if you go to Nissan Community, where you are right now, actually. And then just put your name under the uh, video and sign into the chat and you can comment. We're monitoring that as well. And then you can also join us on Skype if, from anywhere in the world because this is the Internet and you can be in Timbuktu, England, for all I know, and come in on Skype. And that would be computers. Then the number 2K voice, and you'll come in on voice, not video. So I'm going to do that again. But in the meantime, back to you guys. Yeah, Josh, um, I, have a, I have a question. Um, how did COVID a couple of years ago and everything that came with it kind of um, um, impact you and your life, you know, people around you? I'm actually uh, really kind of shocked you brought it up because that was the comment I was just about to make. I was just about to bring that up. Um, I'd actually say that the effects of it negatively were really big for me because 
I think a big thing, and I don't know if this is the best way to view it, was, and I can't judge too much about what was just growing up versus uh, actual COVID, since I went through COVID during a stage where I was still growing up and developing my ideas and thoughts. But for me, it, it really, I think, suppressed my personality because I went through COVID being really disconnected. Um, it went from seeing all my friends at school to only having one or two friends I really talked to throughout the whole COVID period. And once I kind of had to come back to, I guess, the real world in a way, which I know even school isn't that big compared to the real world, but once I had to come back to a school community, at, at the beginning, I was super sheltered because it was almost like I was restarting like a kindergartner going to school on their first day. I had to kind of refigure out social norms. And uh, I really had to go through the work of finding out like how things are. I mean, I even learned just like almost cu customs again of certain ways to act, like how you should be. It was like my mannerisms in themselves were kind of worse because I was just so used to being like shelled off again, like you said. So it's really hard to tell what was growing up and what was COVID because it was just like a twist of fate that my growth period where I had to start to learn about the world also came at the same time as, you know, when the whole world kind of became closed off. So I would say definitely going back to being able to interact with communities made a huge difference because you're able to, I guess in a way for me, I feel like I'm progressing again. And I didn't even realize this until I came back to, you know, COVID kind of like becoming less severe. Um, I didn't even realize that I wasn't making nearly as much progress on myself as I thought I was. I, I would really say COVID was like a monotonous time. Yeah, no. Um, well, for, for, for one, I want to say great minds think alike. That's, that's funny. You were going to bring that up too. Um, but I, I, I think I share a lot of the same experiences as you. Um, you know, uh, obviously we were in different times in our life when it hit. Um, that previous fall was my first semester down here. Um, so I had, I had moved from Malvern to Raleigh, um, kind of said, said goodbye to my parents, said goodbye to my family, all of that, um, and, and, and kind of started getting, getting acclimated in a new place you know, uh, learning what, what it even means to be in college, you know, getting used to the schedule, getting used to living in a dorm, you know, uh, making, making new friends, all of that stuff. Um, I uh, had a great fall semester, loved my time, um, was, was really excited to get back going in the spring. And then, you know, uh, just a, a couple weeks before my birthday, everything got shut down. Um, we actually got sent home the, the week or no, I'm sorry, we, 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 we went home for our spring break. Um, so I ended up flying back, flew back to Philadelphia. Um, and the, 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 the kind of middle of that week, everything, um, the, the, the school emailed us, hey, uh, spring break's been extended by a week. Don't worry about it. We'll see you next Friday instead of this Friday. Um, and then a few, few days later, they said, actually, uh, classes are going to be online, you know, the, 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 the rest of the semester we'll see you when we see it. Um, and, you know, it was, it was such a time of uh, uncertainty for me and just kind of, um, just kind of that, that, that great unknown that kind of came with it. Um, I think having nobody really having any experience with what was going on and having lived through anything like that did a number on everybody. Um, like I, I, I usually go to my parents for kind of advice that way and kind of their past experience really as a source of comfort and, them not having really any either really made it kind of ominous for me. Um, and kind of going back to what you said, Josh, I, I, I completely agree with the kind of regression you talked about um, going from living in a dorm, uh, you know, see, seeing my roommate, seeing my friends on the hall, friends in classes, friends I had made playing like intramural sports, you know, just being a, being a student that way um, to seeing my mom and my dad, my brother, and like two or three of my, my close high school friends. Um, I feel like all the the growth I made kind of in my first semester plus in college really kind of went back to where I was in high school. Um, and that was absolutely a battle for me. Um, I, I, I do think I used the time pretty well to work on myself. Um, like I was I was dealing with a little bit of anxiety kind of stuff that that spring, just kind of the, the readjustment to college. And I was able to get back home, get comfortable. Um, I was able to work out a lot because there wasn't a ton going on. Um, got su super close to my family again, all that. But um, at the same time, when we finally got back 
I mean, uh, classes were still kind of hybrid in that next fall. Um, like that next fall semester, we, we, we would have some in person, some on Zoom, kind of up to the professor. Every, everybody's wear, like required to wear masks. There's lots of social distancing, uh, talking about getting vaccines eventually. That kind of next period, um, I, I, I absolutely think was stunted by the, the COVID, uh, the, like, like that initial lockdown and everything. Um, and I mean, uh, there's, there's probably things I'm still working through today, you know, um, from that, that, that first fall um, semester when everything was, you know, normal, um, get, getting sent home, getting kind of all that unknown, all the anxiety and, you know, all those, all those feelings that came with it, because there was certainly a sense of relief, at least get, getting that extra week of spring break, you know, being able to stay comfortable and, 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 and uh, live at home, not have to be an eight hour drive away, you know, but at the same time, um, I think overall that that comfort was more a, a, a kind of a, a, a Trojan horse for me. Um, and it, it, it did kind of stunt that growth I had started. Um, I know that's a lot. And I, I kind of just went with the flow of consciousness. Do you have anything to say about that? Um, I mean, no, I, I definitely agree. I think the Trojan horse analogy was actually super great uh, because it, it got me to a point of understanding that I think that one thing I'm super grateful to COVID for is it it really taught me a sense of gratitude that was almost nowhere in my character prior to it. I was, I remember we were, I mean, at the time I just started middle school. So I'm still like a small uh, kid, uh, not to say there's small kids in middle school, but I was still learning a lot. And I remember when they first told us, hey, you're no uh, math class like for the next week because of something like this me and my friends were just excited we were like okay now we're gonna get to play way more video games throughout this week you know we don't have to go to math and as that time grew on i of you know not seeing people not having to worry about school necessarily because the way my school did it things became a lot easier once covid started it almost made me realize that i actually like this i actually need this in my life um i guess in a sense, I still feel like I went through the first half year of going back to school, just getting so excited to be at school again, because I had actually lost it. And it's such a funny contrast from, you know, the average younger kid that just doesn't want to go to school when they don't have to. When I was first coming back from the COVID quarantine, I was actually annoyed when the weekend came around, because I just wanted to go to school so bad. And it was because I think it really taught me that there's a you know, deep sense of gratitude to having something productive to work towards in your life. I, I, I was getting too accustomed back to what you said about Trojan horse and dog to just, you know, get to play video games, get to hang out all the time that I was actually harming myself by not finding something productive to connect with and um, not finding something greater to work on with people, to see friends. I didn't realize how detrimental that can be until I got back to it. And I would say ever since then, my work ethic has skyrocketed because I've gotten so much more used to, um, I guess I found so much more value in having a balanced life. Yeah, no, um, um, I, I lost my train for a second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, I, I, I think the, like, like half of the, the point of, you know, going to middle school and I mean, at least for me, um, from like my my one elementary school uh, combined with three other elementary schools into one big middle school. So like by the the, the school districts, like ideals, um, half the point of going to middle school is being thrown into that and having to adjust, you know, learning social skills that way um, and kind of learning, learning how to how to survive at that next level and be more adaptable and uh, like be, be more um, independent. So, I mean, um, I'm sure for a, a, a kid like you and like kids your age, um, especially like like at, at that point, like you said, you're you're not you're really not not all that old. Um, it's a it's a a, a a heck of a transition, you know, both going home and then going back into it. Um, I also think uh, you made a great point in that you really kind of lose a lot of your 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 work ethic and your whether it's study habits um, and that that kind of drive to you know. Um, that, that, that drive to get stuff done. Um, and I think that's a pretty big issue with what a lot of kids face today too. Um, I think like, like kids being like, like, uh, more or less dopamine addicted and, um, screen time 
skyrocketing, you know, kids spending 10, 12 hours a day on name of social media. You know, I think TikTok is the most guilty one of it. And it's kind of designed to keep you locked in there for way longer than you even realize. But I mean, apps like, um, I, I think apps like Instagram and Snapchat are kind of taking that same idea, whether it's reels, whether it's the, 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 um, like content creator stories, all that stuff. Um, it's kind of in this day and age designed to make you, um, addicted to it and spend way more time than is good for you. Um, and it's, 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 it's really going to kill your drive to go kind of actually put some hard work in actually go, you know, actually go study for a test or actually go practice a performance, um, actually go, um, go work out, you know, anything that's, that's how your body kind of naturally gets that dopamine. Um, it, it's, it's going to kind of kill that with that, like, um, um, in, in instant reward, instant gratification that something like a, a, like, like an app like TikTok provides or that being able to go play, you know, play PlayStation for eight hours a day over COVID provides. Um, so, I mean, it, I think it was definitely instituted over COVID, but I mean, I think you can absolutely see, still see those impacts today, especially on the kind of younger generations coming up. And, um, I think it'll be really interesting to see how that continues to spread and how that affects them once, 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 you know, once they're adults 15, 20 years down the line. I yeah, don't know. I guess to add on to that, I uh, I think that the consequences of dopamine and uh, things like even TikTok and all, I think for a younger generation, the consequences extend way further than they actually realize. And not just in the sense that it's so easy to just attribute it to a problem of time, like to just say that the problem is that it's taken up more time in your day. But one thing I start to realize is that it really detracts from a bringing up what you said, your like natural reward system. Um, I guess, and I'm not like a neuroscientist or anything. I don't know exactly how it works, but if your body is kind of designed in order to get the, the body is designed to reward you for achieving accomplishments, because I guess even if we date it all the way back to like our ancestors, they needed to accomplish things in order to survive. But now that you've kind of given yourself a way to manipulate it and to tell yourself you've accomplished something or give yourself the dopamine reward when you really have it, eventually that depression is going to settle in because you come to terms with the reality that you haven't accomplished what I guess you're almost lying to yourself and thinking that you have, which I'm not saying that, you know, watching TikTok is like going to make you think you're an accomplished person. But it's more about the fact that it's triggering the dopamine in your brain, which is designed to be, you know, given out when you've actually reached some sort of accomplishment. Um, and I guess another point to it too, is it kind of gets away from your presence in the moment as well. Um, I never really put value on this until I started to realize that, especially in social environments, one of my struggles was that I just wasn't truly present. And presence comes all the way down to the fact that when you're talking to someone, if you're literally thinking every moment, what, what am I going to say to respond to this? How am I going to respond to this? Um, I mean, I'm not talking right now consciously thinking about everything I'm going to say because then you get overwhelmed and then you don't know what to say. Um, I think that even that level of anxiety comes because you're kind of letting these distractions just make your brain go a little crazy. And so you can't truly stay focused on one thing for a long period of time. Yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, I think I don't, I don't mean to harp on the one specifically, but I think TikTok's a very good example on how you can illustrate this. Like you could get probably a, like several days worth of that natural dopamine, whether you're um, going and, 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 and spending, spending a great time with your family, you know, um, you get a, get a, get a, a, a great practice for your show in, go get a, a good workout in, go get a good study session um, and maybe get like, get a, 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 like eat a good dinner. Um, get a good night's sleep, uh, set yourself up for the next day. You could scroll on TikTok for, for 10 minutes. Each time you scroll, it's another hit. It's like ding, ding, ding. Oh, look, like, like it's this, this, this uh, athlete I like, and then this comedian I like, and then this, um, like, like this very attractive person pops up and then, um, another, another great joke. You scroll on that for 15 minutes and, and your brain could get more, um, like of a, a reward and more gratification from that than of a, a, 
a whole week's worth of school. Um, so it's it it like with 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 that trend, it it, it could end up just making people lazier and lazier and not needing like uh, biologically not needing to go go out and work and go out and kind of work for that gratification. I think that's what's scary about it. You, where are the two of you as far as um, with your age groups? Like, are you different? Are you in the middle? I mean, where are you with things? What do you mean by like, where okay. are we like, with age okay. groups? Well, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you and I'm like, oh my God, that's so true. I mean, there are things that you're saying that I am learning so much from. And I know that, you know, that's a really good thing. Um, and my question is, so Nick, amongst your age group, college, seniors, juniors, you know, are you, do you think the same? Do you all, I mean, not that you can think exactly the same, but are you, are, are you all similar? Uh, Josh, are you similar to your, you know, your group or are you different? Because the two, I mean, you, you are you know, you're really cool and you're really smart. You use great words. Um, you understand things that I'm like so surprised you understand. Um, for me, um, I, I like to think I'm similar enough. I think uh, people generally are like other people. Um, I think something that I have an advantage on maybe over over some people of my age is that I have I've spent a significant amount of time into like pretty separate like geographic places and I've gotten to experience two different cultures. Um, and I, I mean, I, 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 I think by now I can say I've spent a significant enough amount of time in North Carolina to say that. Um, and I think I have a, a better understanding of kind of people as a whole than I would if I had only lived in one, like it, whether I had lived in Raleigh my whole life or whether I had went to school back home. Um, I think I definitely know more about how people work in that way um, than I would if I had been at just one. Um, in terms of the like social media usage and everything, I've absolutely struggled with that before. I have felt like I've, I've, I've just kind of wasted a day away by being on my phone too much and really kind of not even done anything. So um, I've, I've, I've really been working on that. And I know that there's people my age that are a lot worse than me with that. Um, but I mean, uh, I have a, a, a long ways to go too. I think that's a, something that a lot of people my age struggle with. Um, Josh, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on that too. Yeah, well, um, I definitely think that this is almost an answer I really have to think about because when it comes to like determining something like that, I would not say I feel ostracized with my groups in any way because I guess in a sense, everyone is different because of something. And I don't want to give myself the benefit of a doubt that I'm different from them when we could all have our own differences that we're thinking of. And Nick, I think your points are definitely great. When you brought up that thing about different geographic areas and having that experience, for me, who's lived in uh, the same area most of my life, I don't have that set of experiences. But likewise, there could be another strength in the way I've like grown up that gives me a difference in a sense or a bigger understanding in that department. And so I guess what I'd say is I do definitely feel like in my age groups, I, I feel like a little bit like I'm um, which is what everyone feels to an extent, of course. Because at the end of the day, I'm not, I'm never like faking it or putting up a lie, but there's a different personality you obviously put up. I, I'm not talking right now the same way I might talk with like my friend groups, for example, which, which is normal. But I would say that I do think talking about things like this, I don't even know if I have any friends that know that I would like to talk about things like this. They, they might never know that there's even a side of me like this. Um, because it's, it's, it's really hard to set that up in like a normal young teenage environment. Who's really going to talk to you about something like this, right? People Josh, don't see Josh, it. but do you think it's possible that your friends are holding on to this too? Absolutely. And an example I'm actually going to bring up, um, a good friend of mine in school currently, he's started to separate himself from people. Like, he used to hang out with a ton of people all the time. He's changed now where he only likes to really hang out with one person during his entire lunch period. And I, I, I was thinking at that moment in my life when he started doing that, I kind of want to join him just because he was uh, living this life where you're just talking to everyone all the time, super fast. You're not really connecting with them. And when I started talking to him, we started talking about things like this and we realized we both really, really care about talking about this. 
It's just the environment that doesn't really allow it to happen. And so bringing him up as like an example, now we start to just sit at lunch and have these one-on-one -on -one conversations. And it's this big transition from talking to lots of people at once because we both just realized we want to create a space where we can do it. And he's the kind of person where at first you would have never thought he was like that. So I would say definitely, I think lots of kids could be holding on to thoughts like this. And they've been shut down because in a community, people find it boring. If you're at a party and you bring up something like this, especially when it's like a party with a bunch of kids, who's really going to want to talk about it? Um, I think, and I'm not saying that it's not because it's fun, but for a kid, it might not be as fun. Or for a younger person, it might not be as fun. So I think that what really determines if those conversations are going to happen is if you want it enough, and if you're willing to make those one-on-one -on -one connections with people, because talking to somebody one-on-one -on -one says a lot about them, especially um, even like my friend who I'm bringing up right now, talking with people one-on-one, -on -one, you learn a lot more about them because their environment doesn't facilitate how they act. You know, maybe just being around different people, certain people will make them want to shut down a conversation topic like this because they think to them it looks a little weird. And at that point, I don't blame them. I don't think they're superficial for not wanting to bring it up. Um, I just think that their environment is kind of forcing them to act a certain way. So I know that was like a little long of a rant, but I definitely want to say right now, if it does matter to anybody watching or just uh, in general for me to get it off my chest, definitely take the time. If you know somebody one on one that you really connect with, take the time to ask them about some of their deeper things in life. And if they shut you down on it, then I would not don't you don't have to reject them as like a person. Maybe you guys just wouldn't connect on that sort of topic, but you can definitely learn a lot from a one on one interaction. Yeah, no, Josh, um, I, I absolutely agree with you there. Um, I think a big reason I mean, I, I want to say for one, I, I think environment is absolutely right. Like um, if you're out on a Friday night, if there's a party going on, nobody wants to talk about, hey, how are how are we struggling right now? Or like, hey, how 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 is your life bad right now? You know, like I, I think time and place is important with that. But I mean, I also think um, despite of all the work people are doing and in spite of all the progress we've made, because um, I think it's much easier to talk about this kind of stuff now than, say, 10 years ago. Um, I think people today are absolutely still afraid to talk about it, though. Um, I think, like you said, Josh, I think there's a lot more people that would be willing to talk about this kind of thing they're just a little um they're, they're 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 a little afraid to start that conversation because it's scary stuff to talk about um and then kind of with that i also absolutely agree with you that the best way to kind of get into something like that is by by by, by talking one-on-one -on -one and kind of getting a level of uh, trust with that person getting a, a a a level of understanding so then like like once you have that kind of have that baseline like you're talking about with, with your friend um then um then and only then really you can kind of start digging into that 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 deeper stuff um stuff that i i don't i don't, I don't want to say that stuff that really matters because um of course other stuff matters as well but kind of um deeper more more personal more intimate in that way um yeah. topics like we're talking about and um adding on to it a little somebody's state of mind because when you brought up the partying kind of thing again it, it made me realize this it definitely plays a factor. If you're a really happy person uh, and you're really just, your life is going great at the moment, you don't want to think about fixing the things that are wrong with your life. Just that focus kind of brings down your own happiness. So I wouldn't blame a person who's aversive to talking about these things because it just doesn't fit them. Um, I think an important thing though, is if you're, in a, if you're really down in the dumps, you know, you're really in a depressed phase of your life, then this is the kind of stuff you need to talk about absolutely because if you don't talk about it with anyone you'll always feel isolated you'll you'll really feel like you have no one to relate to so i guess to that point i think that if people even maybe in kids the reason why they don't want to talk about these things is because they're sort of trying to avoid having to dwell on it which again is where like one-on-one -on -one, right place right time plays a role too i think it's important to know that somebody who might not be willing to talk about it now, they might be willing to talk about it later, um, just because their state of mind matters so much. Um, especially like if you're doing really well for yourself and 
then you're not going to, you don't need to talk to someone about your problems because your problems aren't having that impending over like looming grasp on your life. But when you're so depressed that everything just feels like it, it's going, it's crumbling, you have so much to talk about. You, you need to fix, figure out these problems, which goes back to how much you want to get really playing a factor. So I would definitely say like my main takeaway or summary of that based off your point is that I do think maybe that is one of the reasons why it's harder for adolescents to talk about these things is because they just, I guess, they're so focused on being happy. They don't realize how many root issues they still need to kind of fix in order for there to be nothing holding them back. Yeah, for sure. Um, I was like, kind of as, as you were concluding and as you were talking about how, like for adolescents specifically, how, um, how it, it, it can be very difficult to kind of get into that kind of stuff. I think another thing that absolutely plays into it is how easy it is to distract yourself today. Um, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of go back into my point earlier with social media. There's probably um, probably close to 100 apps on the average kid's phone today that um, you could go into and just mindlessly swipe, mindlessly scroll through, mindlessly like stuff, and just take your mind off of whatever it is that is hurting you. Because I, I, I love your point that like the more you are struggling with something, the more you need to go talk about it or else it's only gonna get bigger and bigger and like the elephant in the room is not going away. Um, but I mean, with all the, 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 the resources on, like on a kid's phone, on the open internet, um, it's, it's, it's easier than ever to distract yourself from that as well. Um, and really just, just, just kind of, kind of turn your back on it. And that's, it's not an answer. I want to make that clear. It's not a, it's not a way to get better, but it's absolutely a kind of a, a, a coping mechanism. Um, and I, I wonder how many uh, of the youth and adolescents, maybe, maybe, maybe listening to this, maybe not. Um, but I, I, I wonder how many people are, are struggling with that and kind of like unintentionally hurting themselves um, by not kind of facing it head on and dealing with it. Just kind of running sure. from it instead. I'm sure and that's a really big subject. And that brings me to the fact that we're almost out of time, which was you were both amazing for this inauguration for this great new podcast. So thank you so much. And for all of you out there, if any of you would like to be a part of this behind the scenes as well, in front of the scenes, we'd love to have you. We, we you know, we'd love to have you come and host, love to you to be a guest. You have a great story, you have a topic. Maybe you want to help do some graphics. We can always find a place and we're going to have a great conversation. So um, before I end, and, and we'll come, we're going to be doing this the second Monday in March, which I'm not sure what the date is offhand. But with before we end, I just want to turn it back over to Nick and Josh about anything you want to you know, talk about as far as today or in going forward that you want to share with someone. I guess all I have to say is uh, thank you for everybody listening. Um, like I said, I have done nothing like this before, and I was a little worried about it getting into it, but I'm thrilled that I did. Uh, can't wait to keep going. Um, and I guess kind of going back to our topic, keep, keep fighting for you. Keep doing it for you. Um, there's only uh, kind of um, no, no, no matter how much you're struggling, you can always do better. No matter how great you're doing, you can always do better, too. Uh, so keep keep on going. Do it for you. Much love. Yeah, and uh, I guess adding on my final statement, I would definitely have to say that anybody who is potentially watching today, I'm super grateful about it. To be honest, I had a blast just talking in general. But if if you can, I definitely hope you can spread the word. Also, just because I think that having an audience or something like this would really, really help, right? And even we made points about like kids who might be, there might be more kids out there than you would think who want to talk about things like this. If that message can even reach just one person to make a change, that's definitely a big difference, even for uh, someone like me. So it, it does sound a little corny, but uh, definitely spread the word if you can. I had a blast doing this regardless. And I would say that my biggest like summary takeaway from all of this is I think just know that more people might care than you expect. Um, even if you're on the older end and you know like adolescents or kids who have something to talk about, get to know their perspective. Um, people don't really ask the question why enough. Uh, even if they, if they make a stereotype, if they make a judgment, maybe ask them why first before you can really judge them yourself. 
because knowing why somebody does or says something can give you a lot more insight. Wow. I mean, I am so blessed to have the privilege of knowing these two guys and working with them, and I am just beyond delighted. So let's help, let me tell you that the next show is going to be on March 13th. That's a Monday at 6 p.m. And once again, thank you all so much for being here and honoring us. And Amnon, thanks so much, who's producing and taking care of all the technology in the back end. We do thank you so much, Josh, Nick. I mean, beyond my expectations. So thank you both so much. And we'll see you soon. Bye. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.